Witch Hunter Captain is the best class in the game. He has S tier damage, S tier support, B or A tier depending on the weapon, tanking, and S tier special sniping. Witch Hunter Captain very much is the do everything class of Vermintide 2. His killing shot perk makes it so he can do an absolute crazy amount of damage on Cataclysm if used well. Witch Hunt makes every breakpoint in the game easier to hit by a sizable margin, and Animosity is a great panic button that also boosts your team's damage by quite a bit. So yeah, despite being Saltspire's default class, he is actually probably the best in the game. Now, right now, there are three melee weapons that are the best on the Witch Hunter Captain. That is the Rapier, the Bill Hook, and the Axe and Falchion. Now, basically, the whole approach to building Witch Hunter Captain is around critting as much as you possibly can, which is mostly to proc the Killing Shot perk. So naturally, we take 5% crit chance on basically every melee weapon. And yes, we also take block cost reduction, and of course, Swift Slang. The Rapier is actually pretty simple to use for how good it is. For Horde Clear, you're gonna wanna spam your light attacks and then throw in a push attack every now and then. The rhythm I like to stick to is a push attack, three lights, another push attack, three lights, and so on. Starting with a push attack will get that initial group of enemies off of you and allow you to basically just start swinging around. And that's the key thing here, is to throw in your push attack, because if you're just spamming lights, you can get overwhelmed fairly easily, but against hyper density, if you're pushing, you're gonna be fine. When you use the heavy attack, he uses the rapier the right way. Notice how much damage it does when I just do a short heavy attack. So 7.5 and notice how much it does when I hold down the heavy attack almost double and don't think that it's the longer you charge the more damage you do that's not the case there's two stages for the first stage salt spire is kind of lowering the rapier and for the second stage he is pulling the ra rapier directly back that's how I tell which stage it's in so when he starts to pull the rapier directly back directly towards the player that's when you let go and you'll get the stage too heavy and I'm not really perfect at it it's something you'll have to practice and kind of get the rhythm of but first, let me ask you this, is it even worth it? And I think the answer is, nah, kinda? Because I've noticed that the actual time to kill something isn't that much different. Because one thing you have to think about when you're doing these fast heavies is that you have a lot more chances to crit. And a lot of Salt Spire's damage, as we've already said, is coming from his crits. Combine that with how difficult it is to actually master getting the stage too heavy while you're fighting and dodging and all these things, I'd honestly probably say it's best to just spam the heavy the, sh the stage one heavy but if but if you're one of those people that are looking for absolute optimal gameplay <laughs> by all means head to the keep and try to get this rhythm down for the stage two heavy oh uh, the rapier also has a weapon special that does a fair amount of damage it's good in really specific situations mostly because you can block while you're doing it so if you're tanking a boss so if a boss is aggroed on you you can squeeze in a little bit more damage by using your weapon special while it's hitting you if you get cornered by a berserker or a plague monk it's also great for those situations and just so you know, I think the game actually treats it as a melee attack. So if you crit headshots a man-sized enemy with it, you are going to kill it. And another quick note, you can actually drag the stab. I haven't seen much people talk about this, but like you're playing Dark and Darker or you're playing Chivalry, you can actually drag your stab. Now, I would say the Bill Hook is probably his best weapon. You can stunlock a Chaos Warrior. It has great boss damage if you don't mind a little weapon swapping. And though the best Horde Clear combo requires a push attack, the Horde Clear speed is up there with the best in the game. The only real downfall is that the dodge distance is 10% less than the other two weapons. And, and it's a little bit slower and it's a little bit harder to use. But as far as the build goes, it's the same as the Rapier, Crit Chance, Block Cost Reduction, Swift Slay. And so the best Horde Clear combo is just a push attack and a light and a push attack, and a light. Always aiming for the head, of course. If we look in the armory, we can see why. The push attack has a really high damage cleave. The same with the second light attack. Now, when you use the push attack, it actually skips the first light attack. So you'll go straight from push attack to light attack too. But of course, that requires you to have stamina to do the push attack. If you run out of stamina, you're gonna wanna spam lights for a little bit. And you wanna be careful when you do this because when you do those stabs, it's going to leave you open for an attack on the side. So I almost always dodge when I'm doing a stab or I play a little bit further back. And really that's the key with the bill hook is when you're doing those stab attacks you have to make sure you're safe make sure nothing's attacking you there have been many times where i got into a game with the bill hook after using like the rapier or something and all of a sudden i'm taking a ton of chip damage because i'm not paying attention to where i'm at when i'm doing those stabs and also the drag does apply to the stabs on the bill hook as well as it does on all weapons your your go-to combo for armored enemies is going to be your weapon special and a heavy and those combo into each other 
This isn't the highest damage combo, mind you. This is the one that is going to stun lock basically anything. The weapon special is incredibly good. The only thing it won't stagger is a boss. It will straight up stagger a chaos warrior out of its overhead. But again, you have to be careful when you're doing this. Make sure nothing's attacking you from the side. Your heavy attacks have a pretty long range and you need to use that to your advantage. And one thing the game does not tell you anywhere is that this first, that this first heavy, this this stab has a damage bonus to monsters. So if you want to do maximum DPS to a monster, you're going to want to do that first heavy over and over again. The fastest way to do this is a weapon swap combo. First, you need to know which key you have quick swap bound to because you're going to use that key to quickly swap between your ranged weapon and your melee weapon right after that first melee attack. And to keep track of what's going on here, look at my HUD where it says which weapon I have equipped. But you want what you want to do is you do that heavy and you just hit that quick swap button twice. I'm actually pretty bad at it to be honest with you. Okay, I'm gonna try to god damn it. I'm see I'm not that great at it and I don't really use it because I find it to be way too much to keep track of while I'm trying to dodge a boss and everything. So what you could do instead is just do the uh, block cancel. Which at this point I'm sure you know how to do. Okay, now the Axe and Falchion, I would say, is about on the same level as the Rapier. But for me, it gets extra points because of how visceral and violent it is. And same as the other weapons, you want crit chance, block cost reduction, and swift slaying. And the theme here with the Axe and Falchion is you could probably get away with just spamming light attack the entire game. If we look in the armory, we can see it has a nice mix of attacks, with the first light attack being a single target heavy damage, and the two middle attacks being high cleave, and the last one being high single target damage. Because of that, you can pretty much get away with light attacking pretty much everything. But I'm here to offer you a more thoughtful, a more optimal way of using the Axe and Falchion. So back in the armory, you'll see the high cleave attacks are the push attack, light two, and light three. And like with many weapons, the push attack actually skips the first light attack after that. So if we do a push attack and then two lights, we get all of those high cleave attacks in there. So that's technically the optimal combo for horde clear. But you can, but like I said, you can get away with just spamming lights. You'll see, you'll see me do a mix of both in gameplay. For armored units, you have a couple of options. My go-to is just to spam heavies. This will do the job. It actually does quite a fair amount of damage to armored enemies. Another way I like to do it is also just spam the first heavy. So you do the first heavy and then block cancel. That will get that overhead in there every time. But again, you can kind of just get away with using light attacks. And that's it for the melee weapons. Bill hook, bill hook is probably the the best with rapier being the easiest to use and the axe and falchion being my personal favorite as the most fun one to use now for ranged weapons i think all of them can be good with the exception of the repeater pistol but undoubtedly the two best are the crossbow and the brace pistols in case you haven't noticed the theme yet if you can take a special sniping weapon on a character you absolutely should because special sniping wins games basically now when i'm using the crossbow i like to use power versus monster power versus skaven and on my charm i have power versus skaven and attack speed so we have plus 20 against skaven and then plus 10 against monsters this allows you to one shot an assassin no matter what and if you have them tagged you can one shot body shot a choke rat a fire rat and a gun rat which brings me to my main point about the crossbow is that you need to tag the enemy you're shooting and honestly you should just be tagging enemies the entire game i highly recommend that you rebind the tag key so if we go into settings, there's this tag only option, okay? You want you want to put that somewhere where it's comfortable for you to spam. I put mine on left alt. I've even seen people using macros to basically just spam the tag button all game. It's important on every character, but it's especially important on Witch Hunter Captain. Whoever's tagged is going to take 20% more damage. And just to show you, when I body shot a warp fire thrower with that's not tagged, he doesn't die. But if he's tagged and I shoot him once, he dies. So yeah, always be tagging your enemies. So then let's talk about the brace pistols. And the break points for this one are kind of tough. Because it's a medium damage ranged weapon, it's hard to hit specific break points. But I think I found the best build that gives you the best break points like across the board. So what I've been running is power versus armored and skaven on the weapons. And then on the charm, running power versus chaos and power versus armor. This allows you to two shot pretty much everything. So long as it's tagged. So with that in mind, Mind, one of the main problems of the pistols is that it's kind of ammo hungry. But since you know your breakpoints, you know it's going to take two shots to kill most of the specials. So you can just give them a quick one, two, and then you're not wasting any ammo. But yeah, those are the two ranged weapons I recommend. The crossbow is definitely the best, but, but again, Brace of Pistols gets 
fun points, and can be really good if you have a ranger veteran. Okay, so now for talent. Walking Judgment is really just the most reliable way to get temp HP out of these, but you do have some choices to make on the level 10 talent. And Death Now sounds incredible, right? 50% damage bonus to headshots. And it is if you're headshotting with every attack. But what you have to keep in mind is you also have killing shots. So with our build, we have a 15% chance to crit base level. That's that's running crit chance on our melee weapon and our trinket. You have to add a little bit more to that when you factor in animosity. That's a whole lot of math I don't want to do. And then you have to consider other things in the game that boost your crit chance. For most of those crits, a lot of this death knell damage is going to be completely useless because they're going to get one shot by killing shot. And also you have to factor in how much you're actually headshotting things. So while it sounds absolutely incredible, it's not as good as it seems. But I don't want to completely write it off because you could do something where if your team doesn't have any damage to kill bosses and you want to run the bill hook, you could run death now to absolutely murder monsters. But then we have to look at flints. Basically flints just makes all the enemies you hit bleed. And it is a considerable amount of damage when you consider how many enemies you are cleaving through with an attack. So flints just adds a flat number value to all of your your attacks basically and it's going to help you out with horde clear quite a bit and in my testing i was actually killing chaos warriors faster with flins than i was with death Nap. so i by default take flins but you have a judgment call to make here and of course we want assassin because we're going to be doing a lot of crits and a lot of headshots and we have another choice to make on level 20 talent as well fervor will give your team more crit chance and heretic sided will give you more attack speed every time you attack an enemy which is which if you're actually tagging an enemy like anytime you're in battle you're going to have this buff it's actually a pretty substantial talent but if you have a shade or a huntsman or pyromancer you're going to want to take wild fervor because five percent crit chance is actually quite a bit when you think about it and then templar's knowledge i would only take if you're trying to hit a specific breakpoint which i don't know of any crazy breakpoints that this hits but I would love to know if there are any. And for level 25, Castaway is probably the go-to every time, at least with the three melee weapons I talked about, because the other good option is Charmed Life, which increases your dodge range. But the thing is, the Rapier and the Axe and Falchion already have a super long dodge range. And while the Bill Hooks isn't as long, Stamina is incredibly important on the bill hook and you're going to be spamming your push attack on the bill hook so i just take cast away by default but if you're running like the axe or the flail or something i wouldn't you know i would i would take a second look at charmed life for level 30 fervency turns salt spire into an absolute murdering machine for six seconds which is a long time but again if you have a team that can benefit greatly from having extra crit you're gonna want unending hunt because you're gonna be able to spam your ult and if you take this one you need to adjust your gameplay accordingly because if you take it and you're not you using it every time you see 10 enemies in front of you, then you're not getting much use out of it. So by default, I usually take Fervency, and if I end up in a lobby where somebody's playing Huntsman, Shade, Pyromancer, even like Slayer, I will take Unending Hunt. So now to talk about strategy. And of course, as always, the first thing you should do when you get into a lobby is kind of establish what role you're going to play in this team composition. And like I said earlier, the Witch Hunter Captain really is a do everything class. So you need to look at your composition and see what your team is missing and you fill in that gap. So for example, in this game, we have a Handmaiden, a Slayer, and a Mercenary. Now, none of those classes are really specialized in special sniping. So naturally, it would be our job as the Witch Hunter Captain to look at sniping specials. Though you need to pay attention to how your team is actually playing, because if you all drop back and try to snipe a special, well then everyone's gonna have the ranged weapon out and you're gonna get smacked by some rats. And so here's another example where we have a foot knight, a ranger veteran, and a shade. And you'll notice that this party doesn't really have a role that needs to be filled. We have a tank, really great boss damage, and good special sniping with the ranger veteran and the shade. So in this case, our job would be to help out with anything that needs help. And you have to be aware of the situation to do this. If we're getting sworn by a horde of elites, then obviously the foot knight's gonna need help with that maybe. If five specials just spawn, maybe you need to drop back and snipe some specials. In a party like this, you can kind of play a flex role, but you can kind of default to just overlapping DPS with the tank. So now let's talk about how you use your career ability, or your ult as I like to call it. If you are running Unending Hunt, you should basically pop it every time you see 10 enemies in front of you. To a reasonable degree, of course. If you're just killing trickle mobs, then like, who cares? But basically, as soon as the horde hits you, you should be popping your ult. That's how you get max value out of Unending Hunt. You don't want to hold on to your ult while you're using that talent. Now, if you're running Fervency, you don't necessarily just want to pop it for fun. What I like to do is wait until I see at least a couple of elites in a horde. So if you're fighting a horde and then all of a sudden you see a mob of plague monks, 
that's when you pop it because with your guaranteed crits, you're going to make quick work of those plague monks if you hit them with headshots. That's all you really need to know about the ult. If you're using unending hunt, use it liberally. If you're using fervency, then use it for elites. And I want to show at least one clip of a boss fight. Where a lot of lobbies go south is where there is a boss and a horde, along with specials. And this is where the game really tries to test your skills. And the way to deal with this is basically, if the boss is on you, then you just block and dodge and try not to take any damage from the boss. But if the boss is not on you, you need to make sure everything else dies first. The boss is near the bottom of target priority. So specials absolutely go first, then you kill all of the trash mobs and the elites, and then you start to focus on the boss. This is because one person can just sit there, block and dodge the boss and not take any damage where the same is not true for specials, and all of the trash mobs are just going to make the fight messy. But once everything is dead, you can just pop your ult, do your highest DPS combo, and the boss should go down relatively easy. Since Witch Hunter Captain is such a flex class, there's not too much strategy that is specific to the character. Really, if you are good at Vermintide, then you are good at Witch Hunter Captain. It's not like the Shade or the Foot Knight where you play in a certain way. You kind of just approach the game like you do what needs to be done when nobody else is doing it. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I think he is probably the best class in the game. And the fact that he does everything exceedingly well. The fact that he can put up crazy damage numbers, killing hordes, he's great at killing elites, and, and also really good at killing specials because of animosity makes him really hard to compete with. Basically ever since Sister of the Thorn got nerfed after its release, and the big bug with the battle wizard got fixed, Witch Hunter Captain seems to be the best in the game, and not in an unbalanced way. A lot of the value he provides is actually to his team. Obviously from the extra crit chance from his ult, and the animosity is absolutely huge, just having like a flat 20% damage buff on an enemy is enormous. And you'll notice that a lot of like quote unquote perfect comps include Witch Hunter Captain. And the, I feel the only reason Witch Hunter Captain is not in one of those comps is because they want Warrior Priest. But yeah. That is the Witch Hunter Captain. I appreciate you spending your time watching, listening to me talk about Vermintide. I do have some more content on the way. I'm definitely going to do a Diablo 4 video. I'm already working on it. And we'll see how that goes and we'll see where the channel goes from there. Unfortunately, I probably won't be playing Darktide much. I just got super burnt out on the game. I might make more Darktide videos when uh, they start adding new classes and things like that. But the game is far away from being one that I want to play right now considering we have all these crazy releases coming up and this slew of amazing games that have come out recently. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I will see you on the next one.